In this video, I wanted to tell you something about increasing the engine power of a car. I am talking about a car that runs on gas or diesel. But to understand the operation of the different adjustments, you first have to understand the operation of a combustion engine. In all types, fuel and air, oxygen, are led into a so-called combustion chamber. In a petrol engine, a spark from a spark plug ensures that a small amount of petrol explodes, as it were. When the petrol burns explodes, the gas that is created wants more space and the piston is pushed down into the cylinder. A diesel engine does not require a spark. The air required for combustion is first compressed by the piston in the cylinder, after which the fuel is injected. The air, which is strongly heated as a result of the compression, then spontaneously ignites the fuel. The resulting gas mixture wants more space. In the piston engine, this gas mixture pushes the piston away so that you get movement. In a four-cylinder engine, the four cylinders with pistons alternate. You also have five, six and eight cylinder engines. The back and forth movement of the piston is converted into a circular movement by means of the crankshaft and this movement is transmitted to the wheels by means of gears, gearbox and drive shafts. Given the limited space, increasing the volume of combustion chamber of a car is often not possible. Under normal conditions under atmospheric pressure, only a certain amount of air is sucked in. So the idea was born to just force feed more air into the cylinder so that it can burn more fuel and produce more power. This additional intake air can be supplied by either a turbocharger or a supercharger. Both are air compressors, but they operate and perform very differently. Supercharger is the generic term for an air compressor used to increase the pressure or density of air entering an engine, providing more oxygen with which to burn fuel. The earlier superchargers were all driven by power taken from the crankshaft, typically by gear, belt or chain. A turbocharger is simply a supercharger that is powered instead by a turbine in the exhaust stream. Exhaust heat and pressure drive a turbine wheel that is connected with a compressor wheel via a shaft. Each of these power boosting technologies has advantages and disadvantages, but the most obvious difference from behind the wheel is a slight delay in response to your right foot in a turbocharged car, especially when you push deep into the throttle. That's because the turbocharger requires a moment to spool up before delivering its burst of additional power. It takes a second for exhaust heat and pressure to increase enough to spin the turbo after you push on the gas pedal. It's called boost lag or turbo lag for obvious reasons. Superchargers can make their power straight from the engine pulley rather than wait for the exhaust to build up. This means there is no turbo lag and compared to turbocharged engines, including their associated piping. Supercharged engines are relatively simple, but there are some downsides, namely the fact that the boost is relatively fixed. You can buy a larger supercharger or get a different pulley size, but the boost range is nowhere near that of the turbocharger. Superchargers are most commonly used on V8 engines to increase the output of an already powerful engine. This was a fixture in the muscle car scene, where it was often called a blower. Today, superchargers are used on the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 and all the insane SRT Hellcat variants from Dodge, Jeep and Ram like the Challenger Hellcat. Supercharged engines are often noted by their pronounced whine as air rushes through them. This is in contrast to turbochargers, which often emit a higher pitched whistle due to their smaller size. 
though this sound is often less obvious in a common sedan or luxury car as it has less boost. Nowadays there are techniques to avoid turbo lag. A twin scroll turbo effectively brings together twin turbo charging into one neat package. Using two inlets for the exhaust gases instead of the conventional single inlet, this form of turbo is designed to operate at small and high exhaust gas flow rates, reducing the effects of turbo lag. The first inlet to the turbocharger is designed for lower engine speeds where exhaust gas flow rate is low and is therefore small in diameter. This will maximize pressure on the impeller blades where most conventional turbos would be struggling to spool. The second inlet is consequently larger in size to deal with a high flow rate of exhaust gases. A more complicated and less reliable method of reducing turbo lag is VGT. This uses dynamic vanes within the turbo, which can open and close their relative angle to the central spinning shaft. This theoretically means that they can close right up to take advantage of lower engine speeds and then progressively open up to then capitalize on the full potential of the vane surface area. Two is normally always better than one and the same can be said for turbocharging. One small turbo and one large turbo work together to keep the engine boosted at as wide a range of RPMs as possible, reducing turbo lag. The small turbocharger only needs a small amount of inertia to get spooling and therefore boost the engine at lower engine speeds. As the engine speed rises, the larger turbo is then introduced, using its larger vanes, to increase the pressure of the recycled exhaust gases back into the combustion chamber. With electrics infiltrating nearly every other aspect of motoring, it wasn't going to be long before they made their mechanical smiting way into turbocharging. Using an electric motor between the inlet and outlet of the turbocharger, a load is applied through the central shaft of the turbo to keep it partially spooled and ready for the exhaust gases to catch up and take over the spooling process. More things you can do to increase your engine power. Improve your airflow and fuel flow. Look at your exhaust. Make the car and wheels lightweight intercooler upgrade and engine computer tuning. Do you know more things? Please write it in the comments. Thailand where I live is a turbo country. Every engine has turbo boost, pickup trucks, dump trucks, long boats and every other engine you can imagine, even a harvester.